Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Here with a message. Well, the title of this video pretty much says it all an honest and candid talk about porn. Now, why would I talk about this all of a sudden in the middle of nowhere? Well, for one, it's a very important topic. Uh, sex is one of the most important topics that exists for us humans here in this life. So. And I wrote a particular verse at the end of 1 Kings, and it's been buzzing around in my head this week. And I'm just like, you know, I think, I think that's not, that's not just a, you know, like a three, five, okay, sometimes ten minute topic to discuss. I think I'm going to devote an entire sermon to this. If it lasts only ten minutes, that's fine. Somehow I don't think it's going to go that quick with me and my rambling when I when I unleash myself in my Sunday messages and I just like speak my whole heart, it's usually not a quick thing. If it is great, I doubt it will be. So it's going to be 1 Kings chapter, it's written on the other page, 22. And first we're actually going to deal with a textual issue. So th there's a bit of a question what this text should be. I've mentioned in a few of my videos before, every now and then, there's a variant that does matter a little bit. So we're going to dive into that first. So it's going to be 1 Kings 22, verse 37 is where we're going to be. Now, the backdrop for this is King Ahab had just went out to war in, what was it, Jabesh Gilead, I believe. Looking back here. Da, 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 da. No, Ramoth Gilead. Ramoth Gilead. Sorry about that. And he, this was his final battle. The prophet told him, you're going to die. He went out anyway. Some random dude shot a random arrow, and it randomly hit him. So he tells his charioteer, drive me away from the battle. I've been wounded. He gets propped up somewhere, so he's able to watch the battle. His blood flows <laughs> over the chariot as the day goes on, and the battle goes against Israel. And at the end of the day, he is dead. And then it says in verse 37, so the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. Then someone washed the chariot at a pool in Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood while the harlots bathed, according to the word of the Lord which he had spoken. Obviously, the harlots part is what got me to thinking about the issue and topic of porn, but there is a textual question here. Where it says, while the harlots bathed, um, I'm reading the New King James Version, and there is a footnote <clears throat> at that part of verse 38, now, the Old Testament was primarily translated from the Masoretic text. That's where the New King James and the original King James get most and the, the most of and the bulk of their Old Testament translation. There are other varying di different translations, not translations, but iterations of the Old Testament, some in different languages, others still in the Hebrew language. Well, in the Syriac, and in the Targum, Targum is, was another, it was kind of like a commentary on the text of the Old Testament, but it also, in some places, like actually altered the text of the Old Testament. So sometimes it's accurate, sometimes it's commentary. I don't understand a ton of it, I apologize, but according to the Syriac and the Targum, um, they read, they washed his armor. So, back to verse 38, so according to that it would read, then someone, now someone there is in italics. It's not really mentioned who that someone is, and someone being in italics means that word's not even in the Hebrew. It's not there. So it's like, then wash the cherry. That makes no sense in English. So the implication there is someone. So they, just to make the English good and to fill in that blank, they put in someone. So we don't know who or how many how many some ones it was. Then someone washed the chariot at a pool in Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood while they washed his armor. So it would have nothing to do with harlots whatsoever. Now, this this actually ends up not being incredibly important as to like, well, you know, what does the Bible have to say on this issue? Ahab is still dead. His chariot was still washed. And harlotry is still looked down upon in the Old Testament. If you go to Leviticus chapter 19, good old Leviticus, everyone loves that book so much. In verse 29, it says, Do not prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a harlot, lest the land fall into harlotry and the land become full of wickedness. So harlotry is not a good thing. It's looked down upon in the Bible and it is condemned. Um, so, several things to tackle here. It really doesn't matter 
if harlots were bathing or not at the time Ahab died, or if simply the someone who was washing the chariot also washed his armor. The picture painted here in the Masoretic text is a very bad picture. It's the picture of a bad king who's met a very bad end. And so dogs were not looked upon as the lovable, cuddly creatures that we have nowadays. Like in America, we love dogs to pieces. They're one of our favorite animals. Um, not a huge pet person in general, but if I had to choose, if it was like someone's like, get a pet, um, and I didn't really have a, and I had to choose something, a dog would probably be top of the list. You know, they're loyal, they're lovable. Um, most of the time, they're cuddly. So, but at the, in, in the Old Testament, in, in Israel, dogs, I don't know, I think they were used as animals, but they weren't like the pets that we have today. If someone called you a dog, they, they weren't saying, you loyal, lovable guy, you know, they were saying, you dirty, rotten son of a gun, you worthless, good for nothing. That was a huge insult. So for dogs to lick up his wounds... And while the harlots bathed, again, harlotry was severely frowned upon in Israel, and the godly kings would put harlotry out of the land. It was illegal. So, again, it's painting a picture of a bad king meeting a bad end. So, however that verse is supposed to be said, this act, even though the meaning is radically different, harlots bathing and someone washing his armor, that's two totally different things, it doesn't change the fact that Ahab died that he met a bad end, and it doesn't change the fact that harlotry is looked down upon by God, by the Old Testament, and by um, Old Testament Israel. Those things are not affected, so it's not really an incredibly big textual variant, but because of my overall message, because this made me think of harlots, I'll, and that's where this whole porn thing started from, I wanted to address that textual variant. And going back to the verse in Leviticus, it's Leviticus 19, verse 29. As far as the do not prostitute your daughter, a lot of us nowadays would simply say, well, that's the biggest duh in the world. Obviously, you wouldn't prostitute your daughter. What the heck? That's beyond terrible. That's beyond horrible. That's beyond disgusting. And I totally agree with that. But at the same time, I want to point out that that's done quite a bit even nowadays. If you look at poor countries, and you look at, um, I would say, particularly women who need to make money or families that are poor, you know that old saying, sex sells? Well, as it turns out, um, it's also prostitution or harlotry or whoredom. Harlot, whore, and prostitute all mean the same thing. Um, a woman, it, 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 I mean, men do it as well, but it means a woman who sells their body. They have sex for money, and it's called the world's oldest profession. Sex sells, right? Well, if you have, a, if if a, for example, um, not just the daughter, but like if a woman was divorced back in the time, or in some countries when a woman is divorced nowadays, they can't work, they can't make money via some form of work, so they sell their body and they make their money that way. Or if you have a daughter you can sell her body and thus make money that way. And while that it's it sounds disgusting, it sounds horrible, and prostitution in general is looked down upon, even here in the United States for the most part, it's kind of like, you know, those, those dirty whores. That's kind of the thought. I'm going to say I understand the need to feed yourself. Some of the women that do this, they don't do it willingly. They don't do it because they want to. They need to eat. They need to pay the rent. They need a roof over their head. Thus, they give their body. Even you know, putting your daughter into prostitution is not necessarily a greedy man just d using his family by all means necessary to make himself money. It's probably that under some circumstances. Under other circumstances, it's I need to get food. So if my... If my daughter, you know, needs to have sex with some man out there and that brings us the money to get food, including food for her, then I'm going to do it. What I will say, now obviously all of us can, you know, say boo to the greedy man and boo to women who are just looking to make money, but for those who are in need, here's what I'm going to postulate. 
and light up the comments. Let me know how incredibly wrong you think I am if you think I'm wrong. I, what I would say it is better to obey God and suffer. It's better to obey God and be without a home. It's better to obey God and not have food. It's better to, it's better to obey God and not have shelter. It's better to obey God and die. I would be, that's essentially what several martyrs in the Christian church throughout history have done. Their culture, a certain ruler, did not approve of Christian standards or Christianity itself, and the person would die for their faith. I would add to that, obeying the commandments of the Lord are worth suffering for, even dying for. And that part could be, it could be debated, especially if you're not a Christian, like, you know, you do what the heck you have to do to survive. As a Christian, I do not believe that. I believe the principles that God has put in place are worth suffering for and worth dying for. So if that means something horrible happens to a woman or a family, the woman shouldn't go into prostitution. The father shouldn't prostitute his daughter. Even in times of need. And that's not even to speak of just the horrible, disgusting things that are out there. Um, uh, it's just like, ugh. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into that. It's that. That is another ballpark altogether. And the reason all of this has come up, the reason this whole... The, uh, the title of this thing is a candid, honest discussion about porn. So why, am I t why is the first 10 minutes of this video, or 11 and a half minutes, been about harlotry, prostitution, sex sells? Because it just kind of hit me when I read that. I don't even know. I'm just reading a verse about a king's death. That's the primary thing. The word of the Lord came to pass that this king was killed in battle. But this verse just hit me, and it made me think porn stars are essentially glorified harlots. And that's exactly what they are. Porn and porn stars, they're paid for sex. They're paid for you know, either full-on intercourse, they're paid for sexual acts such as fellatio and, or cunnilingus, um, which is basically giving head and eating pussy. I said honest and candid discussion, and that's exactly what it is. And so they're paid to do those sexual things, whether it's full-on intercourse or something in between, or in several instances, an act of lesbianism or an orgy type situation. They're living out these perverted fantasies that people have. And I will be, and just right now to go ahead and satisfy everyone's curiosity, yes, I do look at porn from time to time. And it's not on a, like an infrequent, like twice a year type basis. No, it's much more regular than that. A lot of you watching this that are not Christians would say, who cares? How is that even important? And a lot of you Christians may be saying, you know, well, that, that's gross. That's disgusting. And if you're, I'll say to the Christians, I would also say if you're being completely honest, a lot of you guys are hooked on this stuff too. I have not talked... To v I have not talked to many guys my age and very few men older than me that don't struggle with porn. Not just lustful thoughts, porn specifically. So yes, that's something that I look at from time to time. And that, and yes, I have my favorite videos and my favorite categories and my favorite sites and no, I'm not going to talk about them. Talking about them basically would equal promoting them, giving you something to look up, and that's not something I want to do. I'm here to say it's bad. I'm here to say it's not good. So I'm not going to mention anything for you to look up. Just know, you know, Brandon's a filthy, rotten sinner, and he needs the grace of Jesus. Know that, and know that while part of me desires porn, another part of me, every time I do it, feels guilty afterwards, and is like, I know I shouldn't do that. I know it's bad, and I did it anyway. And what a porn star is, is essentially a glorified prostitute. And this culture does glorify pornography. It does glorify the sex industry. And most people don't. I think, I, I think in the sec from what I've seen in the secular world, you know, men and women alike are like, guys are going to look at porn. They're going to jack off. They're going to masturbate. Whether they're married, whether they're in a relationship, you know, and, and I, the thought is kind of like as long as you don't actually cheat on someone, 
then who cares or it's okay or and if you're single you can be the biggest um slut in the world again whether you're well it's more accepted for men for women it's still slightly looked down upon and that double standard is completely and totally ridiculous if you are being sexually promiscuous whether you're a man or a woman it's sinful it's wrong I will love you one way or the other, whether you're a man or a woman. And if you're a woman, not in that way. No, not like that. I will love you with the love and forgiveness that the Lord Jesus has. And I'll say, you know what? You're doing wrong. I don't approve of your activity. And I'm not going to reject you or cast you out for it. We're all sinners. We all need forgiveness. Some need a little bit more forgiveness in some areas than others. But we're all sinners. So I'm not going to reject someone. If you know if they're going a step beyond porn and actually being sexually promiscuous, but it is it's very accepted in American culture at the time, and it should not be. It's it, to me it's a little bit funny how many states in the United States say prostitution is illegal, but porn is completely and totally legal as long as you're not actually in the sex act yourself. You can put money to an online service and see whatever thing you want. And I do mean like literally whatever. There's a porn service for, I think, pretty much everything. Like any kind of fetish, any kind of weird oddity, any kind of flavor. You know, anything that you can, and even some things that are just absolutely gross and disgusting. Anything and everything is out there. And porn is simply accepted in this land. That harlotry, and it is harlotry, is completely and totally accepted. It's popularized. And it fills the land with wickedness. Now, the candid truth, at least I can't speak for all guys. I can only speak for myself. I can, what I can say for myself is... Obviously, I struggle with lust. I think pretty much every man has a sex drive. Every man wants sex. And visually, visually is that's what stimulates us guys. What we can see, what's right in front of our faces, that is what stimulates us. So watching some beautiful woman strip and then actually have sex with some other guy, that is incredibly titillating and tantalizing to us. And... It just it it grabs us. It draws us in, and we it's it's been said by several scientists, by several professors who have studied sex. It's, I, the saying is kind of like there are two main hungers that a human has. One is for food, and the other is for sex. So it's a it's a deep deep desire in pretty much every grown human being for sex. And, the, and I can obviously understand where that comes from, but essentially what God is saying here is it needs to be controlled. Sexual desire and sexual release, those things need to be controlled. It's not something that you just go out and do wherever. You go out and you make money on. It's something that needs to be regulated because it is important, because it is incredibly integral to... The hu I, I want to say the human experience, that sounds kind of weird, but yeah, while we're down here on Earth, in these human bodies, before we, before we stand before our Maker, you know, there are certain things we all have in common. You know, we all, we're, we're humans. All of us. We, we, we eat, we sleep, we drink, we have to use the bathroom, we breathe, we all have our likes and our dislikes. And we all desire sex. So regardless of your particular fetish and desire, we all desire sex. And that desire is basically people take advantage of that desire and say, you want sex? Well, you can get it for, for this dollar amount, for this price. And thus, you know, prostitution was born. It's a, <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's kind of like an obvious answer. Like, <laughs> this sounds so bad. I'm going to say it anyway. If you're a woman, you're decent, you're decent looking, and you need money, you can definitely sell your body. If you tell a guy, hey, I will let you sleep with me for this dollar amount. If the, if the dude has a dollar amount, he's probably going to say yes to that. And that is 
that therein lies the sin, therein lies the wrongdoing, because sex is supposed to be between one man and one woman in a committed relationship. Um, there can, and I'm not here to argue for marriage or monogamy. I'm not even here to um, argue about the whole homosexual um, stuff. I've talked about that in other videos. The whole thing about the land becoming full of wickedness, because porn is such a popular thing, at least you know here in the United States, I'm pretty sure it's popular everywhere. I mean, in most in a, well, I won't say most, but in a lot of countries, from what I've seen online, prostitution is not illegal at all. And in some countries, it's a very big business. In America, you know, prostitution may be illegal in several states, but pornography. That's a huge multi-billion dollar business that pulls in a lot of money each year. Despite there being free porn sites out there. And I don't think anyone it's I don't think anyone can argue that pornography basically is it's it's media it's mediaized is it's a word now. It's mediaized, videoized prostitution. It's prostitution that you observe and don't necessarily take a part in. And therefore, it's legal and much more acceptable because porn is very hard to legally define. So it's legal pretty much everywhere in the United States. I've never heard of porn itself being illegal anywhere in the United States. And honestly, part of me wishes it was because it's, it's a hands-off, or I guess hands-on yourself only. <laughs> How, what a funny pun. That was hilarious. It's a it's it's a hands off of them and a hands on yourself form of prostitution, and because it's not directly related to another person, it's a lot harder to say. Well, what it legally it's hard to say what is porn in media. Um, no one has clearly defined it. Judges themselves have said it's really hard to lay out specific guidelines for what is and what isn't. Like you know, this is porn. This is educational material. Just for an example. It's real. It's it's hard to legally say what is and what is not because of all the loopholes and ramifications, etc. I wish there was a way to make it illegal, because it, it fills the land with wickedness. It fills the land with the idea that promiscuity is okay, that free sex with anyone, anywhere, anytime, is okay, and it's not. That flies directly in the face of God's intention for sex and marriage. One of the best analogies I've heard about sex is it's comparable to fire. It's very strong, it's very powerful, and as long as it's kept in a safe spot, it's used for wonderful things like cooking food and providing warmth. But if you just let your fire go here, there, and everywhere, you know, if you put it on your chair, if you put it on your own flesh, that fire will consume and destroy those things. Fire is a wonderful asset, but it needs to be used in a very specific way, and it needs to be constrained and regulated. And God says the same thing about sex. It's very powerful, it's very strong. Not only is it the source of where new human beings come from, pregnancy, it's the greatest form of intimacy that God's given us as human beings. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul compares the relationship between a husband and wife to Christ and the church. A lot of people love to moan and groan about the whole wives submitting to their husband's part, but the, the, the verse after that, where it talks about husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church, doesn't seem to get a whole lot of attention. Christ died a brutal, bloody, horrific, torturous death for the church, and husbands are supposed to love their wives with that kind of love. Christ elevates women to an amazingly high stature. He finds them very important. He died for them too. They are supposed to be a man's, they're not just a man's walking fleshlight. They're not just there to satisfy a man's sexual desire, which is essentially what porn reduces the woman to, and what prostitutes reduce, prostitution reduces women to. They become only useful for sex. They're, they're useful because of their breasts and their vagina, and that's about it. Remember, honest and candid, and porn stars as well, that's pretty much what they're good for. And it does tend to kind of give the impression and make you think along the lines of, well, you know, what can that woman do for me? Would I have sex with her? Is she sexually desirable? And it does tend to, and I can say personally, 
I struggled with lust before I was introduced to porn. I actually wasn't introduced to porn until my later teen years. In my earlier teen years, I guess my mom did a good job at keeping me away from that stuff because I wasn't really exposed to that stuff. I'm also older, so the internet wasn't as prevalent when I was younger. Um, I'm 36 years old, born in 1980, so keep that in mind. Um, lust is pretty much a problem for every guy. With or without porn, porn makes it a lot worse. And whereas we we tend, we guys tend to think of, and again, just an honest confession, we tend to think of women in two categories. Would I have sex with them or wouldn't I? It, they, ladies, sorry, sorry to hurt your feelings there, but every guy I've ever talked to thinks along those lines. We try, Obviously, we don't tell you, and we don't express that to you, and we may not even outright express it to ourselves, but in the back of our minds, when we meet, when we meet a woman, that's one of the things that goes through our minds. You know, is is she bettable or is she not? That is something that crosses our minds. We are very much so sex driven creatures. And I'm actually I'm pretty sure the ladies probably think something along the line, same lines when they see a guy. Is that someone I would sleep with or is that not? Is that someone I would consider a mate, someone who I would be with or not? It's it's part of who we are as human beings. But when we start thinking that that's the primary function when we start thinking that sex is the biggest thing that the opposite sex has to offer, that's where we start going astray. That's where we start looking at people in ways that God does not look at them. God designed sex. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. But the opposite sex isn't just for that. Men aren't just good for their penises, and women aren't just good for their vaginas. Every human being was created in the image of God. Every human being has worth and value. Sex is one part of them, it's not the entire person. And honestly, porn does reduce women to that in my mind. When I look at a porn star, I'm not looking at someone, a, a beautiful woman that God created in his image with a very specific purpose and intent in this world. I just look at her as a walking fleshlight, as a pair of breasts and a vagina. That's what porn reduces them to. And when women dress in immodest ways, making sure to accentuate you know the buttocks the the thighs the cleavage and depending on how tight the pants are sometimes even their genitalia it reduces them to that in my mind and watching porn only lust is a big enough problem for guys porn only makes that 10 times worse it fills the land with wickedness it degrades women and makes them only sexual objects and so, just as prostitution is wrong, pornography is wrong as well. It's not, and I'm not, before, just to wrap this up here, because we're almost at 30 minutes, I'm not saying pornography equals prostitution. It obviously doesn't. I am not actually having sex with a porn star. I'm looking at her perform sexual acts or have sex with another human being. I'm not participating in that. I will add to that, it's not. Obviously, looking at a woman in lust is still sinful. I think pretty much everyone knows about the whole Jesus statement in Matthew where if you look at a woman with lust, then you have committed, a, you've committed adultery. Or if, It says if you look at a married woman with lust, you commit adultery with her in your heart. If you look at a single woman with lust, then you've committed fornication with her in your heart. Fornication is the word for sex outside of marriage. So, and I was like, just because you're single, that it's not like, well, it's not adultery, so it's okay. No, it's lust. It's still bad. Don't try to use that as an excuse. In human beings, we have sexual desire to begin with. Pornography just puts that completely in the wrong direction. It's the heart equivalent and the mental and visual equivalent of prostitution. And the women themselves are getting paid for sex. Porn stars are prostitutes. In fact, several porn stars, yes, I've Googled this. No, I haven't hired anyone, for goodness sakes. But several porn stars, even some of the big names, they have an escort service. So if you have enough money, you can sleep with them. And that does logically make sense. If they sleep with people for a living and sex is their livelihood, why wouldn't they take on you know, clients outside of their particular business? Why wouldn't they sell themselves to fans for the right dollar amount? If they're already doing that full time, why not make some more money on the side? It's a horrible logical extension to what is their business. And it reduces them to a, to a bouncing pair of breasts and a vagina that men can use for their own sexual gratification. 
And God has so much more in mind for women. He has so much more in mind for the men who look at who look at the woman in that way. So here at the end of this, I want to say this has been my talk on porn, inspired from that verse in Scripture. And yeah, just it made me think, you know what? Porn stars really they're one, a lot of them are literal prostitutes because they have an escort service, but two, it they're getting paid for sex. It's nothing more than glorified mediaized prostitution. That's all it is, and it's it's wrong. It's wicked. It's bad. It needs to stop in my life, and it needs to stop in your life too. Don't think God doesn't see it. Don't think God doesn't care about it because he does. And if right now, if I've been talking about this, and you're not a Christian, and you're at a point where you're like in your life and you're like, you know what, Brandon? I think I need forgiveness of my sin, whether it be lust, porn, promiscuity, whatever it is. God's arms are open wide, and Jesus is there to forgive that sin. If you will believe that he died on the cross and rose again for you, he will forgive you. All you've got to do is ask him. And if you want some words to follow, then pray this prayer along with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I admit I've done things that are wrong. And I need your sacrifice on the cross. I need the blood you shed to forgive me of my sin. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose three days later. I believe you hear this prayer right now. And I'm asking you to be my God, my Lord, and my Savior. Thank you for hearing this prayer, Jesus. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, then you are a Christian. You are forgiven as of right now, and you're part of the family, you're part of the church. Welcome to the family of God. It is a pleasure and a delight to have you on board. Get a Bible. It could be online, it could be an actual physical book, whatever. But get a Bible and spend a little bit of time in there every day. It'll really help you get to know God a bit more. It'll get to help you know how He thinks about things, what He thinks on various topics like porn, etc. And shoot up a prayer. Whether you're whether you're whatever you're struggling with, whatever's going on in your life, say, God, I kind of tempted to do something I shouldn't do right now, or God, I'm having some hard I'm having trouble. You know, finding work. I'm having trouble paying the rent, getting food. I need some help. Ask him. Pray to him. Or if things are great, you're just like, God, thank you so much. Life is wonderful right now. That's prayer. Just talking to him like that, that's prayer. Engage in that every single day. Get to know your, your new Lord and Savior, your new, your new God this way. It's wonderful when you pray. and you, It's just a connection. Just like any other person. You talk to him. And they talk back. Reading the Bible, that's going to be a big part of him talking back to you. And if I can also encourage you, find a group of like-minded people who also believe in Jesus Christ as God and Lord. And that he died on the cross for their sins and rose again. You're probably going to find those people at a church. Now, not all churches are good. Not all of them believe what I just said. And those churches are bad. Stay away from them. Find a group of people who believe in the things that I just mentioned and the things that you now believe in. And encourage yourself in your faith with those people. Find a good church home. And guys, that wraps it up. We're only three minutes over. That's not horrible for me. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you. God bless.